it is important to recognize what's going on in this election. Everybody who's ever been in any election that I'm aware of is quite bewildered because there is a a, a strain of, on the one hand, a kind of populist, nationalist, xenophobic, discriminatory kind of uh, approach that we hear too much of uh, from uh, the, the Republican candidates. And on the other side, it, there's a just a deep desire to believe that, you know, we can uh, have free college, free health care, that what we've done hasn't gone far enough and we just need to, you know, go as far as, you know, Scandinavia, um, whatever that means. And half the people don't know what it means, but it is something that they deeply uh, feel. So as a friend of mine said the other day, I am occupying from the center left to the center right. And I don't have much company uh, there uh, because it is difficult when you're running to be president and you understand how hard the job is. I don't want to overpromise. I don't want to tell people things that I know we cannot do. I want to level with the American people. And it'll be very clear about the progress I think we can make. Now, it won't surprise any of you to uh, hear me say that I think we can grow the economy, get back to more broad-based, inclusive prosperity. We did it in the 90s. We saw the results of having not only a lot of jobs, but incomes rising. Some are new to politics completely. They're children of the Great Recession. And they are living in their parents' basement. Uh, they feel that they got their education and the jobs that are available to them are not at all what they envisioned for themselves. And they don't see much of a future. I met with a group of young uh, black millennials today and you know, one of the young women said, you know, none of us feel like we have the job that we should have gotten out of college, um, and we don't believe that the job market is gonna give us much of a chance. So that is a mindset that is really affecting their politics. And so if you're feeling that you're consigned to, you know, being a barista or, you know, some other job that doesn't pay a lot and doesn't have much of a ladder of opportunity attached to it, then the idea that maybe, just maybe, you could be part of a political revolution is pretty appealing. So I think we all should be really understanding of that and we should try to do the best we can, uh, not to be you know, a wet blanket on idealism. You want people to be idealistic, you want them to set big goals, but to take what we can achieve now and try to present them as bigger goals. I mean, getting our country to 100% universal coverage is a big deal getting that Affordable Care Act to work better for people, getting the costs down so that people feel that they can afford the care that they now have access to, that's a big deal. You know, going after infrastructure, manufacturing, combating climate change by setting some big goals like half a billion new solar panels by the end of my first term and enough clean power to power every home in America by the end of my second term, that's a big goal. So what we have to do and what I'm trying to do um, is to make the case that we've got ideals, we've got big goals, but we also believe that the path to progress is one that you just have to get up every day and work on. You have to make it your life's work if you do this full time. You have to make it part of your civic responsibility um, for others and just keep making that case. Um, it's not as glamorous, it's not as exciting, it doesn't promise a revolution. I mean, I'm still trying to understand the revolution part, because here's how I think about it. In order, I mean, and, and, and Senator Sanders sort of alludes to this. In order to have the revolution, first we have to take back the Senate and get to 60 votes. <laughs> then we've got to take back the House. And that may require some redistricting in order to get people out of safe Republican seats so they can be competitive again. I think we're already in like year six or seven uh, of a two-year term. So, you know, those of us who understand this, who have been experienced, who have worked in it, know that it's, it's a false promise. But I don't think you tell idealistic people, particularly young people, that they bought into a false promise. You try to do the best you can to say, hey, you know, that, that's his view, that's what he is offering you. 
but here's another way where actually we can achieve a lot of what we have said starting day one and, and make a real difference in people's lives. And I tell them all the time,